All right, you guys have been hassling me about doing a uh, no hackle, and uh, this is sort of the only fly that gives me anxiety. Um, I have, at the very least, tied several hundred of these, um, and to be perfectly honest with you, um, this is one of the harder flies to tie, and it's not that it's so hard to tie, uh, but you've got to remember your technique, so you've got to tie them often to be able to do them very well. Um, and I'll admit, I do not tie them very often anymore. Uh, there was a point in my life where I felt like I needed to learn how to tie this fly, so I sat down and I did. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you go through a, a variety of different techniques and, and little tricks that you try uh, to make it work. And I'll kind of show you what I've come up with. Um, I should mention that there is a Mike Lawson video who ties these very well. Um, uh, on the Umqua Feather Merchants page, I believe, is where that is. Um, and you might check that out as well. This is going to be very similar. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll show you what, what, I, uh, what I've come up with on these anyway. Um, and the idea of this slide is no hackle, is obviously there's no hackle on it. Um, it's a duck quill wing, and the hard part is, is keeping these fibers all together and into this kind of big elephant ear shape where it creates surface area across the bottom of the fly to give you some flotation. Um, so this is, this is kind of a tricky little fly. Uh, it's not kind of a tricky little fly. It is tricky, no doubt about it. Um, and really the best advice I could give you is sit down and, and tie lots and lots and lots of them. Um, now, one of the catches these days is getting duck quills has been, become sort of a nightmare. Um, so if you know somebody that hunts ducks, um, you know, have them save you the wings. Mallard wings work, work great for the larger size ones. Um, teal wings work, uh, even better for the smaller size ones. Um, but uh, where I got my uh, little batch of these is years ago, a thousand years ago, uh, John Barr was doing some spring cleaning, and John used to be a huge duck and goose hunter, um, and he brought me a gallon Ziploc bag of mallard quills, or duck quills anyway, um, that were paired and taped together. You can see that's some old masking tape on there, um, but each wing. And what you want to start with here um, are... Uh, are the feathers on uh, on each wing, the first feather of the right wing and the first feather on the left wing, and match those two together. So you want, um, ideally, um, a left and a right from the same duck, ideally. Um, and that's why a, a set of matched wings is the best way to go about this. Um, John went to the trouble to tape these all together and kind of individually package them together um, and then decided, I, I don't know, just decided that they sat in his closet long enough and he gave them to me. Um, and I've still got a bunch of them. Um, there's a there's a lot of ducks in there. John's a good shot. He doesn't miss much. Um, so that's what I'm going to use here. So these are these are mallard mallard wings here is what I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to pull this back here in line for me, and get us a little more lined up. And we'll give you some focus here. There we go. Um, so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start. So I've got a size, uh, this is a 14, I think. Um, I'm trying to make it big enough that you can see what I'm doing. Um, it's actually a little harder to do in big sizes, to be perfectly honest with you, but um, I want you to be able to see see my fingers in relation to the hook. Um, and I'm just using 14 aught Vivas here, um, nothing fancy. You could use 6 aught Danville. Um, that's what Mike uses. Um, there's not a lot of thread bulk on this fly. Um, not a lot of bulk of anything, really. But I'm going to start that thread at about... Oh, 80% I'll say, and I'll wrap back to just in front of the point. And um, I like to do, um, well, you have to do the tail first, um, but I'm going to take and use just a tiny little pinch of it. You can see there's barely anything there. And I'm going to twist that down on my thread just in a short little segment, like so. And I'm going to use this bare thread that I've got between the dubbing and the hook to work back just to the bend. And I don't really want to be down around the bend. I want to be up on the the straight part of the shank. I'm going to build a tiny little ball of dubbing right there, like so. Um, now you can use natural natural feather fibers for the tails on these, but uh, um, I like micro fibers. They're just tougher. Um, you know, with all the uh, hullabaloo about uh, CDL and and all that, those fibers still break off. Um, and Microfibits do not. So I've got, in the case of this this bigger fly, I've got four of these. I'm going to measure about a shank length long, maybe even a touch longer. I'm going to tie these in right in front of this ball with three or four turns going forward. And then what I'll do is I'm going to pull 
two to the far side. If I can get a hold of them. And then I'll grab the two on the near side. So I'm holding on to the ones on the near side. You can see I've got my index finger between them. Um, then I'm going to wrap back over them. And what I want to do is push my thread wraps right up against that ball to separate those tails. Like so. So I've got a nice widespread tail. Um, one of the advantages of the microfibers as well is they're synthetic fibers. So you can sort of manhandle them and, and push them where they need to be. You even, even give them a little bit of a kink if you need to, um, to spread that out. What you're trying to get out of that is some surface area. And we've got some good surface area there. So now I'm going to continue forward. Uh, just a little bit past halfway, and I'll cut those butt ends off. Then I'll bring my thread base all the way up to the hook eye. And back again to about, I'm going to say 70%. And that's where we're going to tie our wings in. Now, um, I have done this various ways um, over the years. Um, uh, typically, I will dub the body first and then put the wings in. Um, but I've just been sort of warming up for this fly, and I've sort of gone back to the old way where you put the wings in first and then dub after. Um, and hopefully, with any luck, um, I'll get this on the first try. Um, we'll see. So now I've got my duck quill. And down here toward the bottom, you can see on the back side of these, if I hold these up here just right, there we go, this line right here, um, from that line down toward the quill here, down this way, those fibers are fairly thick. Um, so you've got to be down toward the bottom of the feather to get enough length in that thinner section. There, that's showing better. So this line here up is good, but you can see this kind of shadowy little line right here where the fibers get thicker, where they attach to the stem. You want to avoid that section. Um, so I'm going to come from the bottom, especially on a big fly like this, and I'm going to cut a slip that is, you know, at the very least wider than the gap of the hook, like so. So I've cut a fairly wide slip there. You can see it's, you know, one and a half times the, the hook gap. Uh, so I cut that from the left wing. And now on the opposite side, I'm going to cut another one from the right wing. Now, when I pull those out, see how those butt ends became misaligned? I'm going to square those back up. You just kind of push them back in so that you've got a nice shape there. So I'll set my two aside, and that's what I've cut out. You can see how they're same section on both feathers. Now I'm going to take these two feathers, and I'm going to oppose them so that they curve away from each other and even their tips up a bit, like so. And these are fairly wide slips. Um, now, the reason I cut them extra wide is invariably I don't get them the exact same width. So I'm going to, my near wing is a little narrower than my far wing. So I'm going to put my scissor blades through and separate out a few fibers off of both of them. So now, um, having the, the front edges lined up, um, now they're the same width. So now I'm going to take these two slips. And I want to square the tips just a bit. Um, and what I'm doing there... You can see how I kind of reshape the tip of the feather. You can, you can make them very pointy, or you can kind of draw them back a little bit more upright, like so, just the shape of the wing. Um, I want to make sure one of these is much wider than the other. It was handy having the screen there. I could see that far side. So now we've got them about the same width, and I want them about the same shape. I, I can see my far wing needs to be squared off just a little bit, like so. Um, and you can see these are, gosh, you know, three quarters, four fifths of the shank length. They're fairly wide. And I've got that thread hanging at the 70% point. Um, now, the whole gist of tying these wings in is, is basically a, a sort of very controlled pen trap. Um, so what I want to do is I want to push these wings up from the bottom on either side of the hook, and I want them about a shank length long, ultimately. Uh, my thread's hanging between them right now, and I'm going to pinch them in place. And I know a lot of this isn't going to show, and this is what makes this so hard to show. Um, but what I'm going to do is I bring the thread up between the wings, and what I'm, what I'm ultimately trying to do is buckle the far wing in toward the hook and the near wing in toward the hook. 
Uh, the crux of that is, is as I push the thread over the far wing, it wants to roll it out away from the wing. Um, and as I pull it up on the near side, it wants to pull the, the near wing in. So the near wing is fairly easy. It's the far wing that's the trouble. Um, so you've got to kind of control your pinch. It's what's happening inside your fingertips here uh, that's going to control where those wraps go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this thread up and I'm going to pinch it in my fingers. And you can see I'm totally slack here. I'm going to come down. All the way back, you can see the direction that this thread's coming here on the bottom, way back behind the wings, and then up. And I'm going to try to show you here where that wrap went. I'm going to have to redo this to show you, but if I let go slowly, see the angle of that thread wrap? So fairly steep, and you can see how if I start to tighten that thread a little bit, how it's going to buckle that wing. So now let's try it in real life. You know, it's one thing to, to tie one of these things. It's another thing to be able to show how to do it. Um, and that's one, what, one of the hardest things about it is there's just not a good set of directions. And I'm not sure that this is going to be any better, honestly. Um, but we'll try. So I'm going to set those wings in. Bring my thread up between the wings. Drop it on the far side. I'm pinching the thread. I'm going to bring it up between my thumb and the wing on my near side. And I'm holding the wings very upright. You can see the angle of my fingers. Those wings are, are straight up and down with my fingers. Now my thread's out here in the front. I'm going to pull the thread up. And I can feel that loop tighten down inside my fingers. You watch the butt ends kind of curl back underneath there. Now one of the things when you get here is these butt ends very often will curl back in your way. I'm going to take another wrap back in there. And then I can kind of start to wrap forward over those butt ends. And I'll go three or four good tight wraps there. And you notice I've not let go of the wings. Um, so this is the moment of truth. We'll see how they held up. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you can see that they're they're sort of shaped the way they're supposed to be shaped. They haven't split yet, um, which is not, uh, not common at all. Very often you get a split. Um, you can see, uh, let me see if I can turn this for you, the degree of curve that we've pinched into there. And I've got those anchored down. Yeah, those are good and tight. Ooh, feeling pretty good. Um, so now I'm just going to make sure that's not going to move anywhere. Um, now, to trim these butt ends off, what I like to do is kind of separate them. Some of those butt ends will be on top of the hook, and I'll trim those as close as I can. And some of them will be on the bottom. Your thread twists those butt ends around because you're not supporting them. So I'm going to pull you know, what's on top up and what's on bottom down and trim those butt ends out of the way. And then you want to make sure everything's square. And then I'll take a few more anchor wraps just down onto bare hook and back over those wraps just to make sure nothing moves. So we've got our wings mounted. Now I'm going to take my scissor tips and just slide them between the wings to separate the two. Um, and what I like to do here is kind of grab each wing and kind of lift it up and pull it forward a bit. You can even push your, push your fingers in from the back. kind of buckle those forward just a bit. This is the other advantage of the micro fivot tails. You can see I'm sort of manhandling the tails. Um, all right, can you guys see that wing split? Um, not the end of the world. It'll go back together. Like so. Okay. So now I'm going to take my thread up to just behind the hook eye. And what I'm going to do to split these wings um, and kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here all the way around. You can see that little big arc across the bottom. Um, I'm going to take this thread from the front here behind my near wing, under all the way under this edge. Um, and you've really got to control the thread here and come up between the wings. And as I do that, you can see I can kind of buckle that wing forward. I'll take a steep angle toward the hook eye and take a wrap of thread around the hook. And I see I caught some fibers on the bottom of my far wing when I did that, so I'm going to do it again. I'm trying to do this where you guys can see it. Makes it a little tougher. Um, you can see that far wing's getting a little ragged. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Um, we've got chances to fix that. So bring that thread up on the on the near side. Prop that wing up. Get a wrap of thread around the hook. Now I'm going to come on the far side, and this will sort of help to to gather this wing together. I just wet my fingers there a little bit to 
help smooth that out. You can see our, our shape there. Let me get another turn around the hook. You can see the sh overall shape of our wings. I like to prop those forward almost so that they stick out horizontally out the sides of the hook and just mirror everything back together. So there's our wing shape. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Looking pretty good. Um, you can, you know, very delicately, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little corner down here where that's not quite married. Um, so I can just brush it back together. The fibers of the feathers want to stick together. Um, so you just use that to your advantage. Once you've got the wings where you want, and I'm never quite sure if I've got them exactly where I want them, but I feel like I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I like to take a little vinyl cement um, along, not the tips, but the base of the wing in here at the base of each wing. And I'm just going to put a little bead down the base of each wing and that'll kind of lock those fibers in so they don't shred quite so easily. Um, this slide does come apart when you fish it, there's no doubt about it. Um, and those wings are relatively large profile and stiff, um, so they can twist your tippet also. We used to call these SMFs and uh, that was for spinning and I'll let you uh, decipher those other two letters because uh, they just twist the hell out of your tippet. Uh, particularly if you had a fine tippet and a bigger fly. Um, you know, I fished these on the Spring Creeks back in the day. Um, this is a fly that you've got to fish, uh, you know, rising in slack, dead water. Um, man, they do eat this. This is a, this, this thing's a dead on ringer for the real bug. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's a beautiful fly. That's, that's what's so compelling about it. So now I'm going to take uh, some super fine dubbing. And, and you could use, you know, rabbit or beaver or whatever you like. Um, and whatever color you like. Really nothing else changes on this fly besides the dubbing and thread color depending on what species of mayfly you're tying. And I'm going to put a thin strand of this dubbing on the thread. And I'm going to start to work back. And I like to cross under the wings on the on the bottom. And I'm going to work back to start this dubbing I'm going to prop these wings forward just a bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Start the stubbing at the base of that dubbing ball and then I'll work forward and I kind of tilt the hook a little bit. You can see I'm working around the base of the wings. This is sort of like wire wraps on a brassy. Um, you're just trying to tuck one in front of the other. And I want to dub right up to the back of the wings and you can actually sort of position the wings a little bit with those thread wraps. Um, now my dubbing strand was a bit tapered there, um, so I've got a bit of taper already in the body. I might overlap just a bit back and fatten them up along the thorax. Then I'm going to cross to the front and use that last bit of dubbing to dub the head. And I like to keep it skinny like that. Um, well, I've got a little space in there. I'm going to put just the tiniest bit more dubbing on there. This one's going so well, I feel like I'm going to make them perfect, um, which is not always the case. Um, like I say, this fly can be can be very frustrating. Um, it takes a lot of practice to, to get to do right. Um, there we go. So I filled out that little head area. Uh, then I'll draw some thread out and I'll whip finish here just up behind the eye. Nick that thread out of there. And that's our finished no hackle. Um, from the front edge, front side, you can see those wings are, uh, get back over here, um, those wings are very wide, widespread, um, very much curved down um, under the hook even. You can kind of finalize that, that shape. And that's one of the advantages of putting that that little bit of cement, vinyl cement, at the base of the wings is you can kind of change the tip shape of the wing without them fraying anymore once you get that on there. Um, but I'm, I'm going to say that's pretty good for doing that on video. Um, don't ask me to do this one live because I just, I got to warm up. I got to tie a few bad ones first. I tied, oh, I wouldn't say they're bad, but they ain't perfect. Um, I wouldn't say this one's perfect either, but that's the, that's the gist of them. Um, you can see that widespread wing. That's what gives you the surface area uh, that makes this fly float. And gosh, it, it sure is a pretty fly. Um, so there's our Mike Lawson no hackle. Um, 
Whew. First fly of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed that. You guys should uh, watch this video a lot and like and subscribe because I'll probably never do that on video again. But uh, um, it's my lucky day. Somebody's looking out for me. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Charlie Craven. Take care.